Imagine leaving your home for an adventure to the highest peak on Earth. Picture yourself being in such a scenario. What would the world look like? Well, lonely at the top. But before picking up that bag for this excited adventure, let's journey back to the stories about individuals who tried to make it to this same spot all by themselves. Lurking amidst the icy landscape of Central Asia is a range of towering mountains known as the Himalayas. Among these is an iconic landscape called Mount Everest, which is famous for being the highest point on Earth. For this reason, there is no doubt it will captivate the minds of many, including scientists and enthusiasts alike. For decades, many have attempted to make it to the summit of this mount. However, doing so comes with a price. In spite of the harsh reality lurking amidst this icon, some people still have great stories to tell about their journeys to the peak of Mount Everest. George Mallory and Sandy Irvine are believed to have been the first individuals to reach the summit of Mount Everest in 1924. However, they encountered difficulties during their descent, and sadly, they never returned. As a result, what happened to them remains a mystery. Mallory and Irvine were part of a British expedition that aimed to conquer the highest peak in the world. They made their final push towards the summit on June 8, 1924. Despite facing extreme weather conditions and challenging terrain, they pushed forward in their quest to reach the top. Unfortunately, no one witnessed their final moments on the mountain, and their fate remained unknown for many years. Various search expeditions were organized in subsequent years, but none were able to locate their remains or provide definitive answers about what happened to them. It wasn't until 1999 that an expedition discovered Mallory's well-preserved body on Everest. The discovery sparked renewed interest and speculation about whether Mallory and Irvine had indeed reached the summit before their tragic end. However, conclusive evidence to support this claim was not found with the body. Instead, some sort of mysterious claims were attributed to it. Also, in 1951, mountaineer Eric Shipton made a fascinating discovery during an expedition in the Himalayas. While exploring the Menlung Glacier in the Everest region, Shipton stumbled upon a set of unusual footprints that resembled those of a creature commonly known as the Yeti, or the Abominable Snowman. The footprints were large and humanoid in shape, measuring about 13 inches long. Shipton took photographs of the prints, capturing the attention of the world and sparking widespread speculation about the existence of the elusive Yeti. The discovery of these footprints fueled the enduring myth and fascination surrounding the Yeti, a legendary creature believed to inhabit the remote and snowy regions of the Himalayas. Descriptions of the Yeti vary, but it is often depicted as an ape-like creature, covered in shaggy hair and possessing human-like qualities. Over the years, numerous expeditions have been organized to search for the Yeti and gather evidence of its existence. However, conclusive scientific proof has remained elusive. Despite advances in technology and increased exploration of the Himalayan region, no definitive evidence, such as DNA samples or physical remains, has been found to confirm the existence of the Yeti. But however, what do you think about these images? Could it possibly be the footprint of a real-life Yeti? And could it also be the reason for the disappearance of those two individuals? Well, that's not all. There are more fascinating stories. In 2017, the climbing community was shaken by the tragic, accidental death of legendary climber Julius Sturck. Sturck, renowned for his daring expeditions and impressive achievements, met his untimely end during a climbing expedition. Sturck had gained fame for his fearless approach to mountaineering and his numerous successful ascents of some of the world's most challenging peaks. He was known for pushing the boundaries of what was considered possible in the climbing world. During his final expedition in 2017, Sturck set out to conquer a notoriously difficult peak in the Himalayas. Accompanied by a team of experienced climbers, he embarked on the arduous journey with high hopes of adding another triumph to his impressive list of accomplishments. Tragically, disaster struck during the ascent. Details surrounding the exact circumstances of Sturck's death remain somewhat unclear, but it is believed that he encountered a fatal accident on the treacherous slopes of the mountain. So if you're ready for this trip, remember Sturk's story, be careful and be prepared to overcome circumstances. Well, that's still not all about it. There are still more stories to tell. 
In 2002, an experienced snowboarder named Marco Sifredi went missing while attempting a daring new route. Sifredi was known for his skill and passion for snowboarding, but this time he ignored the warnings given to him by others. Excited by the prospect of conquering unexplored territory, Sifredi set out on an adventure to snowboard down a previously untouched slope on a famous mountain. Many people cautioned him about the dangers and urged him to reconsider, but Sifredi was determined to push the boundaries and achieve something extraordinary. As he embarked on his expedition, Sifredi was well aware of the risks involved. The mountain was known for its difficult conditions and unpredictable weather, but he believed in his abilities and was confident in his decision. Days went by and Sifredi did not return. Concerned friends and family alerted authorities, who launched a search and rescue operation. They scoured the mountain, hoping to find any sign of the missing snowboarder. However, despite their efforts, no trace of Sifredi was found. It was as if he had vanished without a trace, leaving behind a mystery and a sense of sorrow among those who knew him. Now, these stories are gradually becoming more mysterious rather than scientific explanations. However, let's keep watching. There are more fascinating stories. Many individuals have testified that there are spiritual forces controlling activities in the Himalayas mountains, including Mount Everest. For this reason, an inexperienced adventurer decided to go for one in the year 1934, since he believed in divine assistance. Let's listen to this story. In 1934, climber Maurice Wilson embarked on a perilous journey, driven by his unwavering belief in divine assistance, despite his lack of climbing experience. His story is one of courage, determination, and tragic consequences. Wilson, a British aviator and former soldier, was captivated by the allure of Mount Everest, the world's highest peak. Despite having no formal training in mountaineering, he set his sights on conquering the formidable mountain, firmly convinced that he would receive divine guidance and protection along the way. With limited resources and minimal equipment, Wilson arrived in India with a grand plan. His intention was to fly to Everest's base camp and attempt a solo ascent, an audacious endeavor that even seasoned climbers considered perilous. Undeterred by the warnings of experienced mountaineers, and the challenges that lay ahead, Wilson pressed on. He crash-landed his small plane in the vicinity of Everest, far from his intended destination, and began the arduous journey on foot towards the mountain. Wait, 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 wait. Did you hear that? If you didn't, it is because you haven't smashed that subscribe button. Well, let's continue the story. As he ventured into the unforgiving terrain, Wilson faced a series of hardships. Lacking proper climbing gear and provisions, he relied on his unwavering faith to sustain him. He believed that divine intervention would guide his every step and ensure his safe passage to the summit. However, the harsh reality of the mountain quickly became apparent. Wilson encountered treacherous weather conditions, icy slopes, and the physical demands of high altitude. His lack of experience and inadequate preparations made the challenges insurmountable. Despite his determination, Wilson's journey ended tragically. His body was found on the slopes of Everest, having succumbed to exhaustion and the extreme conditions. His dream of reaching the summit remained unfulfilled. However, this was a great move by Wilson. It is said that your dreams can never become reality unless you put in the effort. Though he couldn't make it, he died trying to make it. But remember, you need experiences to embark on risky journeys. Wilson wasn't wrong when he said he believes in divine assistance. This is because several climbers who made it out have claimed there's a mysterious guardian angel present on Mount Everest, providing assistance to climbers in their desperate struggle to survive the treacherous conditions of the death zone. These stories tell of a supernatural force that appears when climbers are at their most vulnerable, offering comfort, guidance, and even saving lives. The death zone, located above 8,000 meters or 26,000 feet on Everest, is an unforgiving and inhospitable environment. The lack of oxygen, extreme cold, and fierce winds make it an incredibly challenging place to survive. Many climbers have lost their lives in this treacherous zone. However, amidst the harsh conditions and perilous circumstances, there have been remarkable accounts of climbers experiencing a mysterious presence that seems to watch over them. These encounters have often occurred when climbers are on the brink of exhaustion or facing life-threatening situations. According to these stories, climbers have reported a comforting presence that appears out of nowhere, 
offering encouragement and guidance. Some have described feeling a warm, protective embrace as if being shielded from the elements by an unseen force. In several instances, climbers have credited this mysterious presence with saving their lives. They claim that the entity guided them to safety, pointing out the correct path or providing crucial information about potential dangers. Some climbers have even reported hearing voices giving them specific instructions to ensure their survival. These accounts have left climbers and mountaineering experts puzzled, unable to explain the phenomenon scientifically. Some have attributed these experiences to hallucinations caused by extreme altitude and exhaustion. Others, however, believe that there may be something truly extraordinary occurring on the world's tallest mountain. One example of an individual who made a claim of encountering a guardian angel presence on Mount Everest is Anatoly Bukhriv. Bukhriv was a renowned Russian mountaineer and guide who was part of an ill-fated Everest expedition in 1996. During the tragic events of that expedition, which resulted in multiple deaths, Bukhriv claimed to have encountered a spiritual presence that guided him and aided in his survival. He described feeling the presence of his deceased friend and climbing partner, Scott Fisher, who had perished in the same expedition. According to Bukhriv's account, he experienced a series of inexplicable events and encounters that he attributed to divine intervention. He claimed to have received guidance and warnings from Fisher's spirit, which he believed helped him make critical decisions and avoid further danger. Bukhriv's account, as well as his reputation as an accomplished mountaineer, brought attention to the concept of spiritual assistance or guardian angel-like experiences on Everest. His story became widely known through his book, The Climb, co-authored with G. Weston DeWalt, in which he recounted the events of the expedition and his supernatural encounters. It's important to note that Bukhriv's claims are based on his personal experiences and beliefs. However, they remain in the realm of subjective accounts and have not been scientifically verified or investigated. As with any anecdotal claims of supernatural phenomena, individual interpretations and beliefs play a significant role in how such experiences are perceived and understood. While others claim about being helped by Guidance Angel, others on the other hand claim that this region is being hunted by spirits and that these spirits are responsible for the death anniversary in this region. One individual who shared such a claim is the renowned mountaineer Reinhold Messner. Reinhold Messner, an Italian climber and the first person to ascend Everest without supplemental oxygen, is known for his daring expeditions and his deep connection with the mountains. Messner has spoken openly about his experiences on Everest, including encounters with ghostly apparitions that left a lasting impression on him. During Messner's solo ascent of Everest in 1980, he reported seeing what he described as shadowy figures that appeared and disappeared in the distance. According to his accounts, these ghostly apparitions seemed to be dressed in traditional Himalayan clothing, resembling Sherpas or climbers from past expeditions. Messner claimed that these figures appeared to be observing him from a distance, their presence both haunting and intriguing. Messner's encounters with these mysterious apparitions left him with a sense of awe and reverence. He speculated that they could be the spirits of climbers who had lost their lives on Everest, forever etched into the mountain's history. His experiences fueled his fascination with the spiritual and metaphysical aspects of mountaineering, leading him to explore the deeper connections between humans and the mountains they strive to conquer. Messner's account is just one example among many reported ghostly encounters on Everest. Other climbers have shared similar stories of seeing shadowy figures or feeling an eerie presence while navigating the mountain's formidable slopes. Some have described hearing whispers or distant voices as if the winds carried the echoes of past climbers. These ghostly encounters contribute to the mountain's haunted reputation, evoking a sense of the supernatural and the unknown. But let's take a breath. Could it also possibly be that this region is not only haunted by spirits, but other humans are responsible for the death of some people? Let's listen to this other story. The Story of Climbers John Griffiths and his friends recounts a harrowing incident on Mount Everest where they found themselves facing a mob of over 100 angry Sherpas. This confrontation resulted in an attack with stones and sticks, leaving the climbers in a perilous situation. John Griffiths, an experienced mountaineer, embarked on an expedition to climb Everest with a team of fellow adventurers. 
As they ascended the mountain, tensions began to rise between the climbers and the Sherpas, who are the local guides and support staff integral to mountain expeditions in the region. The exact cause of the conflict remains unclear, as there are varying accounts from both the climbers and the Sherpas involved. Some reports suggest that it stemmed from a disagreement over climbing routes or the use of resources, while others mention cultural misunderstandings and clashes in communication. Whatever the initial trigger, the situation quickly escalated, and the climbers found themselves confronted by an angry mob of over 100 Sherpas. The Sherpas began pelting the climbers with stones and wielding sticks, turning a challenging climb into a life-threatening ordeal. For hours, Griffiths and his friends endured the barrage of projectiles, desperately seeking shelter and protection from the relentless assault. They were outnumbered and outmatched, their safety hanging by a precarious thread. The climbers' survival instincts kicked in as they attempted to defend themselves and find a way to escape the volatile situation. They tried to reason with the Sherpas, pleading for a resolution and an end to the violence. Their pleas, however, seemed to fall on deaf ears as the Sherpas continued their aggressive onslaught. Eventually, through a combination of luck and resilience, Griffiths and his friends managed to escape the mob and find refuge. They sought assistance from other climbers and support teams in the area, who provided them with much-needed shelter and medical attention for their injuries. Following this issue, could it possibly be that these Sherpas have claimed the lives of some people before, who couldn't actually help themselves like Griffiths and his friends? Well, I don't think so. On the slopes of Mount Everest, a haunting reality remains. The presence of over 200 bodies still scattered across its treacherous terrain. These remnants from past expeditions serve as somber reminders of the unforgiving nature of the mountain and the challenges faced by those who dared to conquer it. Some of these bodies are even visible to climbers, creating a distressing sight as they pursue their own quests. The extreme conditions, avalanches, falls, and altitude-related illnesses have claimed the lives of numerous climbers throughout the mountain's history. Due to the harsh environment and logistical challenges, recovering and bringing down the bodies is an arduous and dangerous task. The bodies that remain on Everest are exposed to the elements, and the extreme cold and high altitude slow down the natural decomposition process. As a result, some of the bodies have been preserved for years, becoming macabre landmarks for subsequent climbers. These visible bodies serve as a stark testament to the risks and sacrifices involved in mountaineering. They are a constant reminder that the pursuit of personal achievement and the quest for the summit can come at a grave cost. The sight of these bodies can evoke a range of emotions in climbers, from sadness and empathy to a renewed sense of their own mortality. Efforts have been made over the years to retrieve and identify the bodies on Everest, but the challenges involved have made it a formidable task. Factors such as the extreme altitude, unpredictable weather conditions, and the logistical difficulties of organizing recovery missions have hindered progress. Additionally, the families of some climbers have expressed their wishes to leave their loved ones on the mountain as a final resting place, adding another layer of complexity to the issue. Adding more death bodies on treacherous rocks means adding more death to the zone, since the bodies become climbing obstacles. In recent years, there have been initiatives to address the issue of the bodies on Everest. Mountaineering organizations, government agencies, and climbing teams have collaborated to establish guidelines and protocols for responsible climbing practices. These include raising awareness about proper disposal of human waste, minimizing litter, and discussing potential solutions for the recovery and respectful handling of the bodies. These bodies are stuck in a place called the Rainbow Valley, where almost all the dead bodies of Everest are found. Each year, an estimated 12,000 pounds of human waste is left behind by climbers, creating a pressing environmental concern. The vast amount of waste generated on Everest is primarily due to the large number of climbers who attempt to conquer the mountain. With limited infrastructure and facilities for waste management, the disposal of human waste becomes a major challenge. As a result, much of the waste ends up accumulating on the mountain's slopes and in the surrounding arrays, adding more difficulty to the climb. Humanwast on Everest contains harmful bacteria and pathogens that can contaminate the snow, ice, and water sources. These pollutants have the potential to seep into the streams and rivers that flow down the mountain, posing a threat to local communities and wildlife downstream. However, more comprehensive measures are needed to tackle this ongoing problem. 
it is crucial to invest in sustainable infrastructure and waste management systems that can handle the high volume of waste generated on Everest. This could involve the establishment of waste treatment facilities at base camps, stricter regulations on waste disposal, and increased monitoring and enforcement of responsible practices. Now that you've heard about the challenges, it takes to be lonely at the top. Do you want to be one of the new generation of climbers? Let us know in the comments section. Now, you might like to ask, but future destiny, is there any scientific explanation responsible for the death toll in this region? Well, there could be some possible explanation, though not in all scenarios. Picture this. The zone of no return is a treacherous region above 8,000 meters on high altitude mountains, where the majority of deaths occur due to the thin air and hazardous conditions. This area, also known as the death zone, poses immense challenges to climbers and has claimed the lives of many adventurers throughout history. As climbers ascend above 8,000 meters, they enter a region where the oxygen levels are extremely low. The air becomes thin, making it difficult for the human body to function properly. In this oxygen-deprived environment, climbers experience a range of physiological effects, including decreased mental clarity, impaired judgment, and reduced physical capabilities. One of the most significant risks climbers face in the death zone is altitude sickness. It can manifest in various forms, such as acute mountain sickness, AMS, high altitude pulmonary edema, AAP, and high altitude cerebral edema, HAC. These conditions can have severe consequences, including fluid accumulation in the lungs or brain, which can be life-threatening if not properly addressed. The harsh weather conditions in the death zone also contribute to its perilous nature. Extreme cold, high winds, and sudden storms can quickly turn a challenging climb into a life-threatening situation. Climbers must contend with frostbite, hypothermia, and the risk of avalanches, which can be triggered by the unstable snowpack prevalent in these high-altitude regions. The combination of physical and environmental hazards makes the zone of no return a daunting and unforgiving place. Climbers often push their physical limits to the extreme, facing exhaustion, dehydration, and deteriorating health. The lack of oxygen, coupled with these challenges, diminishes their ability to make sound decisions and respond effectively to emergencies. Rescue operations in the death zone are incredibly challenging. The extreme altitude, unpredictable weather, and technical difficulties make it extremely difficult for rescue teams to reach stranded climbers in time. As a result, those who encounter trouble in this unforgiving zone often find themselves in a dire situation with limited options for assistance. Just like the Marianas Trench, no one expected any wildlife to survive such conditions. However, some species still survive this harsh region. While the mountain may appear barren and inhospitable, it is home to a variety of resilient creatures, including spiders, grasshoppers, and predators. These remarkable organisms have adapted to the challenging conditions of Everest. Spiders, for instance, can be found in the rocky crevices and sheltered areas of Everest. They possess adaptations, such as antifreeze compounds in their bodies, allowing them to withstand freezing temperatures. They spin intricate webs that capture prey, taking advantage of the occasional insects that venture into the area. Grasshoppers are another surprising inhabitant of Everest. They possess robust exoskeletons that provide protection against the elements. Their ability to jump allows them to navigate the rocky terrain with agility, while their herbivorous diet enables them to find sustenance from the sparse vegetation that manages to grow in certain areas. Predators, such as birds of prey, also exist on Everest. They have adapted their hunting strategies to survive in this challenging environment. These birds have keen eyesight and sharp talons, enabling them to spot and capture their prey, which often includes small mammals and other birds. Their survival relies on their ability to locate food sources amidst the harsh conditions of the mountain. However, it is essential to note that the wildlife on Everest is relatively limited compared to other ecosystems. The extreme conditions restrict the number of species that can survive in this environment. The biodiversity is relatively low, and the populations of these organisms tend to be small and localized. Furthermore, human activities on Everest, such as mountaineering expeditions, can have an impact on the fragile ecosystem and its wildlife. Climbers must be mindful of the presence of these organisms and take steps to minimize their disturbance. Respecting designated wildlife habitats and adhering to responsible climbing practices can help protect these resilient species and their fragile environment. 
I know a lot of people might be wondering. But why are the tallest mountains in the world located in this region? Well, this region was never a highland before, as we see today. Millions of years ago, the Himalayas mountain chains, which provided space for our highest peak, Everest, was formed as a result of the movement of two major plates on Earth, which happened to collide at their plate boundaries. Around 50 million years ago, the Indian subcontinent was located south of the equator and existed as a separate landmass. It was situated on a tectonic plate called the Indian Plate. This plate began moving northward at a relatively fast pace, approximately 15 centimeters per year. As the Indian Plate moved northward, it encountered the Eurasian Plate, which formed the northern boundary of the Indian subcontinent. The collision between these two massive plates was a slow and relentless process, taking millions of years to unfold. When the Indian Plate collided with the Eurasian Plate, the sediments and rocks that were present at the edges of the Indian subcontinent were crushed and pushed upwards. This resulted in the formation of massive folds and uplifts in the Earth's crust, giving rise to the Himalayas, with Mount Everest rising above all the others. For this reason, tectonic activities such as earthquakes commonly happen in this region. For instance, the year 2015 marked one of the darkest days in the history of Mount Everest, when a powerful earthquake struck Nepal, resulting in tragic consequences for climbers on the mountain. This devastating event claimed the lives of 18 people and left many others stranded, including mountaineer Jim Davidson, who faced a harrowing 11-day ordeal. On April 25, 2015, a massive earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 struck Nepal, causing widespread destruction and loss of life. The earthquake's epicenter was located in the Gorkha district, northwest of Kathmandu, but its impact was felt across the country, including the Everest region. Also, the discovery of marine fossils in Mount Everest has helped us understand that this region was once a coastal region. Marine fossils are the remains or imprints of ancient marine organisms, such as shells, corals, and other marine creatures. They are typically found in sedimentary rocks that were once part of ancient oceans or seas. The presence of marine fossils at high elevations, far from any current bodies of water, suggests that these areas were once underwater and have experienced significant geological transformations. One remarkable example of such discoveries is the finding of marine fossils at the summit of mountains, including the Himalayas. These discoveries have sparked curiosity through the minds of individuals worldwide. Thanks for watching this video till the very end. While you're still here, feel free to click the video on your screen.